Once upon a time, there was a poor man. He was very poor and had a lot of children. It was near Christmas time and they had nothing to eat at home. So he had the idea to go out into the forest and collect nuts. Out he went and collected half a sack of nuts. He then took the nuts to the town where he planned to sell them. As he got close to the town, he met an old friend. Good morning, old friend. Good morning, old friend. Where are you going? I've got some nuts in this sack. I thought I might exchange them for some food for the children. Christmas is here and we have nothing to eat at home. I've got half a sack of poppy seeds and I also have a lot of children. I would like to exchange it as we don't have anything to eat at home either. Look, old friend, let's exchange the sacks without looking at what's inside. And they quickly exchanged sacks. <laughs> then one of the old friends arrived home. Well, children, I got half a sack of nuts in exchange for that half a sack of ashes. I shall pour them out for you to eat. He emptied the sack and it was full of oak apples. What a man! He cheated me! He will pay for this. The other old friend also arrived home. Wife, look, I brought half a sack of poppy seeds for that half a sack of oak apples. The children were so excited that they danced around the table. The wife brought out a giant bowl. Pour those poppy seeds out, poured them out, but they were ashes. What a man! Why did he cheat me? So he set off to the town to meet his old friend. They both arrived and began to threaten each other with sticks. What a man! Why did you cheat me? They began to fight, but after a while, one of them began to laugh. Why did you cheat me? We could never cheat each other. Let's join forces and work together. A rich man gave them each a job and employed them for the last three days of the year. When the three days were up, they went to the man and asked for their wages. The rich man gave the order to bring each of them a plate full of gold. They were both very happy. They both got their wages and they both set off home. They were poor, but at the same time, they were cunning men. Look, old friend, we should go back to the pit where the gold was kept and we can take more of it during the night. So they took an empty sack and went back. How will we go down there? It looks very deep. 
So they fastened their belts together and one of them lowered the other man down into the pit. The one in the pit quickly gathered up as much gold as he could. Let me know when the sack is full. I'll pull it up first and then I'll pull you up. But the man in the pit had a better idea. If I send the gold up, he'll run away. I have to stay down here, but then they'll catch me. He put a lot of gold into the sack, but he did not fill it up. Then he climbed into the sack with the gold. Now you can pull. As they were nearing the forest, the man in the sack said, Put me down, old friend. I know I must be heavy. Oh, you're here too? Of course. I didn't want to stay down there. Let's have a rest. I'm very tired. Very well. Let's have a rest. The man was so tired that he sat down and fell fast asleep. So the other man picked the sack up and began to run away. When he awoke, the other man had gone. What can I do? He's taken it now. Very well. Then he cut a stick, tied a thread to it. And cracked it like a whip. Get on with you! And he made the noises of an ox cart. The other man heard the noises. Just in time. I'm so tired. I shall put my sack on that cart too. Then he saw his old friend. Old friend, we could never cheat each other. No, we couldn't. Let's have a rest, old friend. You must be tired too. I really am very tired. Then they had a rest. Now the one who had taken the sack fell fast asleep. The other man saw that his old friend was fast asleep and he took the sack and ran all the way home. There he told his wife, put this gold quickly in a box, take the hoe, come with me to the cemetery, bury me, and if my old friend comes to see me, tell him I am dead. So they went to the cemetery. The woman carefully buried him under a thin layer of soil so that he would come to no harm. Then she returned home, where she held her head as if she was crying. When the other man awoke, he could not find his friend. He knew that he must have gone home and so he hurried to his house. Good evening, dear lady. Good evening, kind sir, she said in her saddest voice. What's the matter? Why are you so sad? Where is my old friend? Your old friend? He died. I have just come home from the cemetery. Poor friend. I'm really sorry that I couldn't attend his funeral. Dear lady, lend me a hoe and I'll go and tidy up his grave. No need for that. It's tidy enough. It's an old friend's duty to tidy up his old friend's grave. So they went to the cemetery. The man saw the fresh grave and didn't dig with a hoe, but started to stamp about like a bull clawing at the soil. Moo, 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 he said and he hit the ground with the hoe. Stop that bull, said a voice from the grave. If you dig me up, my old friend will find me. Moo, 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 the other man said again, and he got hard to work with the hoe. Stop it, bull, my old friend will find me. I've already found you, old friend. Come out. Oh, well, we could never cheat each other. No, we never could. Then they went home, divided the gold between both families and had a very merry Christmas. <laughs>